Welcome to Train Signal. You are watching Migration to the vSphere Distributed Switch. This is going to be a short lesson slide wise, definitely longer lesson lab wise than the slides, but it, we're just going to go through considerations before migration to the distributed switch and then the process without disruption. And I'll show you how to do that in the lab. So it's going to be quick, and I'll just show you kind of this methodical process you should use for migration of an existing environment to the distributed switch. So short, sweet, let's go ahead and get to it. Let's get started. Migration. So let's say you've got an existing environment. You've got VMs, you're up in production, everything's good, you're happy, but the last lesson kind of sold you on the distributed switch. What do you do? You're not going to just kind of rip everything out and re rebuild, so you've got to know how to migrate. You can absolutely do a migration, production environment, from standard to the distributed without downtime or disruption. When we flip the networking over, you might drop a frame or two very similar to vMotion, but it'll be quick and painless. Now, you know, you're going to be making significant network changes. I suggest you do this during a soft maintenance window. You should not take an outage, but just in case, it's probably a good idea to do it in a soft maintenance window. I also suggest that you confirm your configuration with a test host and maintenance mode. I'm going to kind of just run through it on my lab, but I've already got a working distributed switch that I've already tested. So what I normally do is put a host in maintenance mode, roll it over the distributed switch, probably create some temporary VM kernel interfaces on IPs and VLANs, ping around, make sure everything's good, and then start working through the rest of the host. And I'll show you how to kind of walk things over. And so if you're working with a working and tested configuration, you can just roll the host and the VMs very easily. It's just a few steps with the wizard, and you can move 100 VMs, 200, 300 VMs very quickly because vCenter gives you an easy to use wizard. You basically say, all right, look for all VMs that are currently on this port group and move them to that port group. And as long as the VMs have access to the both port groups or to the destination port group, the wizard will do the rest. So it's actually very simple. If you're moving a running prod environment to the distributed switch, it's best to walk hosts over. The only issue we have, and by walking these over, I mean normally you're going to have multiple NICs for redundancy. Even if you have two for, you know, an NFS vSwitch or two for a vMotion or whatever, you're going to walk one of those over to the distributed switch, make sure everything's good, and then walk the other one. The only time this is a problem, if you have a vSwitch with a single physical NIC. You may want to borrow, and I use that in quotes, a physical NIC from another switch or do something or you may have to take a maintenance window for that flip, but usually people do redundant multiple NICs, so we just walk them over. And we're just going to move one physical NIC from a vSwitch to the VDS uplink, test connectivity, very important on the first host, you definitely want to test connectivity, and then go through the rest. So the wizard also allows you to migrate VM kernel interfaces and things like that. You can easily do that. Once you've established that it works, say we, we walk a couple of NICs over, we create a VM kernel interface on the distributed switch with a temporary IP, and we make sure we can ping out, we can delete that one, and then migrate the production VM kernel interfaces from the vSwitch to the distributed switch. This allows you to move hosts over without changing IPs or doing a big IP song and dance four-step process. It'll just walk it on over. The downside is, if you don't do proper testing or your physical switch ports that you're plugged into vary from host to host and they are not the same and one host has an issue where it tested fine on another you could end up where the kernel VM kernel tries to walk over and doesn't and you may have to do a recovery that's one reason it's really important to make sure your physical ports are all the same consistent from host to host to host now is not the time to find out that isn't the case so once you kind of walk VMs over and walk VM kernels over, then we move the remaining physical NICs to the distributed switch. Couple word of warnings. Be careful walking a host over if you're using IP hashing and port channels. I see this. It bites people. They don't think about it. Simple example, my lab. vSphere host with four NICs. Let's say that I've got all four of those NICs in a single vSwitch using IP hashing. And if you remember, or you know, in the lesson where we talk about physical connectivity and hashing types, I mentioned that to use IP hashing, all those NICs have to be in a port channel. The physical switch has to have them in a port channel, then we put them all in a vSwitch and set it for IP hashing. What happens if I walk two of those NICs over to the distributed switch but don't change the physical switch? 
physical switch doesn't know that I've pulled two of those NICs out to basically create a separate channel. What happens is things break. You might get lucky. You might win the lottery of hashing to NIC and things continue to work for the migration. Odds are you're going to have a problem. So what I recommend you do is if you're about to migrate from vSwitch to VDS and you're using port channels and IP hashing, you change the vSphere host and then change the physical switch. That matters a lot if they're carrying the VM kernel interface. If you break the port channel first, you may not be able to talk to the host anymore to make that other change. So change on the vSphere host, then change on the physical switch. If you're doing this, I definitely recommend you do it in at least a soft maintenance window. So that can cause a problem. It can strand a host. And you don't want to have NICs leaving, you know, moving to the distributed switch when the physical switch still thinks they're in a port channel. Again, I've seen this bite people several, several times. It comes up as a common topic. Only matters if you're doing IP hashing. With MAC hashing or source or a virtual port ID hashing, you should not be using port channels on the physical switch. If you are, you need to revisit that and take a look at it. But normally you don't, so it's not an issue. So let's get to it. This is probably going to be a fairly lengthy lab. It's not going to be big. We're just going to move one host over and I'll show you the process. I've actually got a host down right now with actually a networking issue that I've got to fix, but you don't need a lot of hosts for us to do this demo. So we're going to migrate the lab environment to the existing distributed switch I already have, perform some tests, roll hosts and NICs, and then use some wizards to migrate VM kernels and VMs. So with that, let's go ahead and let's get started. Once again, back in the lab. So in this lab, we're going to migrate an existing environment, this right here, over to the distributed switch. And so I've kind of cleaned some things up and reorged the lab a little bit. And if you look, let's see, config networking, I've got all four NICs from each host in a standard V switch and not a member of the DVS or VDS. So again, the same thing. And again, the same thing. So this simulates an environment where you're using standard vSwitches and you're just now starting to deploy the vSphere distributed switch. In this, the first thing that I recommend you do is deploy your VDS. I'm going to use my VDS that I've already deployed. So the steps you're going to want to do are, you know, deploy your VDS, configure the settings here, you know, set your uplinks. I suggest you name them even though I'm a bad person and haven't. Uh, it's really nothing else. If you're going to use private VLANs, go ahead and configure that there. Uh, set your MTU. If you're going to use jumbo frames, if you're going to do you know jumbo frames for NFS or iSCSI, make sure you enable that there. You probably want to set your discovery protocol and your operational uh, operation there, and you're good. Then you're going to want to go ahead and configure your uplink port group, which, as we saw before, is basically just your VLAN range. If you want to play it safe, you can leave it as all, or you know prune down. Then create your port groups one by one. Make sure you set the, the right VLAN option and the VLAN number. And then, you know, depending on if you're going to do true traffic separation, you'll need to go into each of these port groups and go ahead and set the correct active standby unused configuration and the correct load balancing configuration. If you're going to do multiple distributed switches, then you'll repeat this process, deploy the next one, do the configurations, and create the proper port groups, and do the proper, you know, configurations of the DV uplinks if necessary. What I'm going to show you here is just moving into a single distributed port group. I'm going to show this, you know, how we kind of just map the interfaces over, and I will show you how to do manual mappings of the interfaces, you know, specifically which VM NIC maps to which DV uplink. And we'll do this across three hosts. And the idea here is that I'm going to show you a couple of different ways. First way that I'm going to show you is I'm going to take Bumblebee here and I'm going to walk him over to the distributed switch. So I'm going to move a couple of physical NICs out of this V switch into the distributed switch. I'll create a VM kernel interface and I'll move a test VM over. We'll do some ping tests, confirm everything's good, migrate the VMs, the VM kernels, and then move the rest of the interfaces over. Then I will show you basically how to walk through and do an entire host in one easy wizard walkthrough. And that way you can take a host like Megatron here, and I will move all four NICs, all VMs, and his VM kernel interface here over to the distributed switch in one single kind of motion. You can do that once you've tested your configuration on your first host like I'm going to show you with Bumblebee. 
And then for Optimus here, I'm going to walk you through a manual configuration. Say, you know, you've got your DV uplinks uh, have been named, and you want to make sure that VMNIC2 goes to the third DV uplink. I'll show you how to manually do that. So it'll be kind of a three-phased approach, and we'll just walk through them one by one. So with all that, let's go ahead and start with Bumblebee. And again, at this point, I'm going to assume your distributed switch is created, configured, and your port groups are already configured and everything like that. So the way that you move a host into the distributed switch is to create a new distributed switch or add this host, you need to go to Inventory Networking. So I'll cheat and click that, and it takes us back where we were. So click the main switch up on the left, and then you want to go to the Host tab here. And this is blank right now, so what you can do is right-click here, or you can even right click here and you can do add host or manage host. I'll just do it here. Add host to vSphere distributed switch. So we'll add. And it gives me my option of three hosts. So the first one we're going to do is Bumblebee. So I check him. Then I'm going to pick the NICs and I'm going to walk over two and three. Now, word of caution here. I think I mentioned this in the last lesson. If I was doing all four of these NICs in a port channel with, say, IP hashing, and I walked two and three out of this over to the distributed switch, things are going to break. You may be lucky and maintain management connectivity. A lot of your VMs will probably stop talking, but you may maintain connectivity for management and be able to fix this. You may not. So make sure before you walk these over, if you're doing IP hashing on the standard vSwitch and you have to use a port channel for that, you want to turn it back into like hash by virtual port ID or MAC address, break that port channel on the physical switch. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just doing a uh, hash by virtual port ID, so I don't have to deal with any of that. So I'm going to check NICs 2 and 3. I can look at things here and say view details. All it's going to give me is basic CDP or other information. Well, it's not even CDP. It's going to tell me which NIC, chipset, PCI, ID number, the driver I'm using, the link status, what it's seen as far as observed IP ranges, and any other information. Connected to a Cisco SG300. So we'll say OK. Now, a note here, you can't choose an uplink group. Why not? Well, simple. You can't choose an uplink group because with the distributed switch, you only get one uplink group. We did talk about that when we talked about traffic separation. If this was the Nexus 1000V from Cisco, you use this same wizard to move hosts into that switch. It can have multiple uplink groups, so that's a settable option. Incompatible hosts. If any of your hosts don't meet the requirements for this switch, we've, we've seen some of this before, it'll list it here and the reason. Settings are real simple. Maximum number of ports per host. We can change this. There are port switch maximums. We've talked about that. By default, it's 256. If you think you're going to have enough VMs and VM kernels with enough virtual NICs that you're going to exceed that number, raise it here. But if you don't, leave it where it is. You can always, again, change that later. So this is the only host I'm going to do, so I'll hit next. Okay, first thing it's going to ask you is, Jason, do you want me to go ahead and move your VM kernels over? Do you want me to go ahead and migrate this? And the answer to me is no, because this is the first host and I haven't tested it yet. This might work. It might not. So I don't want to do this now. If you migrate this over and say your physical switch configuration is incorrect or your port group settings are incorrect because you have to say, okay, I want to take this VM kernel interface and map it to one of my port groups. If, say, my management port group here wasn't correct, and I move that over, the host is going to become isolated. I'm going to have to go to the DCUI console, and I'm going to have to fix it. So for now, we're just not going to migrate. Then it says, do you want me to migrate virtual machines? So I can go here, check this box, and pick which virtual machines I want to migrate. And all it does is flip through the different VNICs, like this one, from a source port group to a destination port group. Again, I haven't tested this yet. We'll come back to this later when we do the, the whole move in one shot. But for now, say no. Next, this is the interface. You've seen this interface in some of the other lessons, but again, on the left are your port groups, on the right are your physical uplinks, and what it's going to do is it's going to map VMNIC2 to DV uplink 1, VMNIC3 to DV uplink 2. All it's doing is taking them and putting them in order. So 1, 2, 3, 4, the first one I selected, the second one I selected. It doesn't care what VMNIC number it is. You might care, the wizard doesn't care. And again, on our third host iteration, I'll show you how to manually assign these. So we should be okay. Once we come back and migrate VMs and VM kernels in one shot, you'll see this fill out. But for now, it's a very basic configuration. So we'll do this. It'll update the VDS data on the host, and the host should appear. All right. So now let's double-click this guy to jump back over. 
and if we look we will see the standard distributed switch configuration screen. Here we've got our two uplinks, they should go green in just a second. A couple of things that annoy me, there's some GUI issues in this interface, they've been here since the original release of the distributed switch. Sometimes when I click the plus signs here, it did it a second ago, it'll jump back to the top and not actually expand. You click it again, it expands. It's really annoying when you've got a big list of VMs over here you're trying to expand. You go all the way to the bottom, click the expand, it shoots you all the way back to the top. You've got to come back down and do it again. Don't think you're doing something wrong. It's a bug I wish they'd fix. Now that these have gone green, we're good to go. Let's see if they have any data. They do. They have CDP data, so this gives me my information on CDP by clicking the little I. And now we're ready to start testing. So one of the first things that I recommend that you do is create a VM kernel interface and use that and test it into a ping test. This makes sure when you roll your real VM kernel for your network management or vMotion, things like that, that they work. So to do that, we've got a couple options at the top. Manage virtual adapters, manage physical adapters, and properties. Properties is real simple. It's that once again, how many, hosts, how many ports per host. So we'll say no. Properties up at the main network level is just talks about IP version 6 support. I'm not doing that here, so we will say cancel. Come back, and so if you want to add more physical NICs to your uplinks, you click this button, like that right there, and you can click and add. Spoiler alert, this is kind of where you can manually assign VM NICs to uplinks. Cancel that. And then to do anything with your VM kernels, it's manage virtual adapters. So I don't have any in my list. I've got options. Add, which is create, edit, edit, remove, remove, and migrate. This migrate, and you're going to see two migrates. This is the first one. If I had a VM kernel here already on the distributed switch, I could highlight it, hit migrate, and it will walk me through a wizard to migrate it back to a standard vSwitch. If for some reason I wanted to roll this host back out of the distributed switch, you can use this to migrate those back over. Now we'll do add. And you want to migrate an existing. So if I want to migrate something from the standard switch into the distributed switch, then you would choose this. So we'll do that again in a minute when we're ready to move the host over. For now, let's do new. The only option you're going to get is VM kernel. Next. And then it's going to say, which port group do you want to put me in? You can also do a manual port. Unless you have a reason or tech support tells you to do this, just use port group. There we go. And I will put it in the management VLAN or management port group, which is VLAN 5. Then what do you want to use it for? Well, you can use it for vMotion, we can use it for management, and fault tolerance if you want to. Next. Give me an IP address or DHCP one. I'll give you one. 192.168.200.235. Subnet mask. Done. And you hit finish. It creates the VM kernel interface here. Standard MTU of 1500. And if you want to change any of that, you can, but again, this is just for simple testing. So we'll say close. Now the next thing I recommend you do is you SSH into another host and ping that VM kernel interface. What does that tell you? Let's see, he's 93. So that tells you that traffic is flowing across those physical, across your physical switch, down to those two uplink ports, at least one of the two uplink ports we configured, and it's talking to the VM kernel interface. So we do 192.168.200, we'll do 91. Root and my password. I am on Optimus. So we'll ping 192.168.200.235. We get a response. That's a good thing. Tells me that we're passing traffic all the way across to, see it jumped again, this VM kernel interface. Now, I know my interfaces work. I know these port groups are right because I've been using them in the labs all along. But you may not know this yet. So I highly suggest that you, if you, for vMotion, for fault tolerance, anything else you're going to have VM kernel interfaces for, you create one of these temporary VM kernels and you do some ping testing. Make sure they all work before you roll them over. You know, the one that matters the most is, your, is the one you've got set for management that you're using for connectivity from vCenter. That's the one you don't want to isolate. If you roll it over and vMotion doesn't work, darn, that sucks. But if you roll it over and isolate the host, that's a lot worse. Now. I used the temporary, we got a good ping, we can delete that guy. So let's go back to manage, highlight, remove. Yes. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is move a VM over and ping test that. So which VMs are on this host? I'll use you. So we do edit, and I'm using him because I happen to know his IP address. Switch it from VM network to the other VM network. 
If you haven't noticed, and I haven't mentioned it, I think I have, either way, the t reason, the way you can tell a distributed switch port group from a standard V switch is it appends the name at the end. Nash Lab VDS. If I have five VDSs, it'll show all the names with the correct VDS at the end of it. So we'll say OK. Actually, let me show you something while we're doing this. So he is pinging fine. And what I'm going to show you is uh, later when we mass move a host and all its VMs, all it's going to do is automate the changing of this setting. So if we do that, network adapter, swing it on over to the VDS, hit OK, and you're done. So we didn't even drop a ping. Now it's only pinging once a second, so you know, if, unless you hit it at that right specific moment, but it's much like a V motion. You may drop a frame but you're not going to drop connectivity if your configuration is good and it looks like my configuration for that port group is correct and the trunking from the physical switches so it's a good way to test and it's kind of like when you vmotion you might drop a frame that's why i say you can do a non-disruptive migration from vswitch to distributed switch without you know taking everything down again i usually recommend a soft maintenance window just in case you end up in a bad spot but i have done this in the middle of the day in production environments and just rolled things over it helps if you're not making any other changes, meaning this configuration is pretty similar to this configuration. I've got the same port groups and things on each side. I already know that external VLAN 100, external VLAN 100, management is 5, VM network is 5, same as over here. These already work, so when I roll it over, I'm really not changing anything. I don't have to change the physical switches. I don't have to change anything. The only time this is usually an issue is, again, if I have these in a port channel and do an IP hashing and I roll some over and don't break that port channel. But if you're like me and doing hash by virtual port ID or Mac, everybody's happy. So the VM is good and the VM is happy. We can see it here. He's green. I can hit info. Gives me info about that guy. And now we're ready to actually migrate this host. So step one is I want to migrate the VM kernel interface. I want to move it off the standard switch over to here through these uplinks. So again, we come back to manage virtuals. We do an add, and remember this migrate is to go from vSwitch to distributed switch. So we say migrate. It's going to say I found one, and it's in here here called management network. It's currently on vSwitch zero. Where do you want me to put this guy? I want to put you in the management VLAN. Next. It's going to say here's what we're going to do, Jason. I'm going to move VM kernel zero to here in your management port group on VLAN five. And it's going to, you know, connect in here, and you're not making any changes to the uplinks. Anything new will be in yellow. If you, had, if you moved this one, the vMotion one, and FT out one time, you'd see three bands of yellow. I'll say finish. It'll do some things down on the task list that I've got hidden, and then it moves the VM kernel over. Keeps the same IP. Did a refresh there. Keeps the same IP. Keeps the same MTU. Keeps the same what am I used for settings, and all that. So we say close. Now, given the fact that Bumblebee has not dropped off the network yet, and we can actually ping him because he's 93, I feel very confident that that worked. The next step is to migrate virtual machines. Now, you could go through here one by one and edit settings. That's not what we're going to do. Go back to inventory networking. Go back to the switch. Summary tab. Migrate virtual networking. It's a little simple wizard both the source and destination. So source is going to be VM network. Destination is going to be the other VM network on the virtual distributed switch. And we hit next. If you have multiple VDSs, you can filter here. If you have VMs that are not connected to any network, you can do that and just mass connect them. For us, I'm just walking things over. Next. So you're going to see that some things are in bold and some are not. The things that are in bold are on a host that can see both the source and the destination port groups. Now, we have only moved Bumblebee. Bumblebee is the only host that has a foot in both worlds. So he's the only one that can do this. So if I check this up here, and it's going to say, hey, some of these things, destination network is inaccessible for one or more VMs, whatever, we know that. It's only going to check the ones on Bumblebee. If I had done all my hosts and walked them all over, and hit this button, it would have selected them all. And that's fine. You may just want to take uh, you know, eight hosts and walk them over, put VM test VM kernels, test VMs on each one, and make sure you ping 
and then rolling things over, you know, in one big shot or, you know, individually instead of doing one test host and then going through the rest of the host quickly. You know, if it's my environment and, you know, I was a guy on the line, I might want to do that too. So there's nothing wrong with that. But for this, it's just going to select the ones. If it has multiple VNICs, you'll see those here. I don't, so we're all good to go. I'll say next. It's going to say number of VMs is six, number of networks is six. I'll have one to one, so everybody's, you know, simple. And I hit finish. If you look at the tasks, all it's doing is walking through those VMs and rolling them over. We go back, we go here. I think that's everybody. If we look at configuration, vSwitch, is that everybody? Yes. Now, you're going to notice sometimes, and this guy's one that sticks, ViewCon. Let's take a look at ViewCon. Edit settings for Mr. ViewCon. It's a view connection server. Network adapter, he is already set to the VDS. Some servers are will show up as a kind of a GUI weirdness again, where these don't go away yet. It Even if you refresh, it may not. There it goes. Nope, it just moved it up there. So don't be surprised. Um, that's just a GUI issue. It actually did move the VM over. So next, we want to come over here, and I want to roll the last two physical adapters over. So I go Manage Physical, and then I can add my two NICs to my DV uplinks. Hit one here for VM1, VM NIC1. It says, do you want to remove this from the existing vSwitch? Yes. Same thing for this guy. It's going to give me the same warning. Yes. Say OK. Give it a second, and it will populate these two uplinks, and we'll give them another second, and they will go green. Ah, stop jumping around. OK. While it's doing that, you may have noticed something a second ago. If you're doing active standby unused and you kind of want to do a quick sanity check, if you click a port group, it shows you which NICs are active for that port group. Mine are all active for all port groups, so everything's kind of turning yellow. The reason these aren't is I have nothing in there actually using these. But you see that those are actually pointing to the correct physicals. If we come back to the standard switch, we have no adapters. This is a lie, so we hit remove. Yes. Give it a second to refresh again. This host now exists solely in the distributed switch. We moved it over with no disruption. See, I told you could do it. You thought I was lying to you, but you were wrong. So we just rolled this guy over manually. Now, in the next phase of this, I'm going to show you how to do this in one shot using the wizard. Let's go over here to Megatron. He's going to say I'm not part of the distributed switch. This one is going to go much quicker. I'm going to make an assumption that all my physical switch ports are configured the same across all my hosts, so I'm not going to have any nasty surprises as I roll things over. So to do that, we go back over to networking, back to my switch, right-click, add host. So I'm going to do Megatron. I'm also going to go ahead, be brave, and do all four NICs. Why, yes, I want you to go ahead and move this VM kernel over. It's basically going to do what that wizard did we used earlier to roll the existing VM kernel interface over. So I'm going to pick the management port group again. If you have multiple VM kernels, you can select them all and then just pick one of these. It's not really exciting with one, but it allows you to do a mass change. Next. You want to migrate VMs? Absolutely, I do. So we will do this. Let's see. I want to, I'm going to do mass, but I have to be careful with Mr. Untangle here. So I want him to go to external. Actually, here, hold on. Make this simple. Select all except for. So we'll sign and we will say VM network. Switch them all, so then I'm going to go back and do my except fours. External, because that's going to take my internet connection down, and my, my wife would be very unhappy with me. So here's all of our other VMs. They're all good. I know those are all exist on VM network, except for that one. Then we say next. And here's what we're going to do. A lot of cool stuff. So it's going to take each of the VM NICs and place them as a DV uplink. Again, it just does them in order. Since I selected all four, it's 0, 1, 2, 3. There's no, you know, that's, that's just all it does. Then it says, okay, for your external, I'm going to put your two untangle interfaces. One is the outside and one is DMZ here. 
I'm going to roll your VM kernel interface, dot .92 to here, and all these VMs I'm going to move under VM Network VLAN 5. So I say finish, and I stand back, and we take a look at everything. So if we look here, you're going to see a bunch of tasks kick off. Go back to Mr. Megatron, watch over here. And you're going to see things start to fill out. You're going to see things start to go green. It'll start moving VMs in. Here's the first external for Mr. Untangle. Got those in. All four of my uplinks are green. My management interface is good and happy. And my VMs are rolled over. Was that simple or what? Done. If we look at our standard vSwitch, it is barren. So now with the standard vSwitch cleaned up, we can take a look here and you'll see again, it's moved over completely to the DVS or the VDS. Next, we're gonna show you phase three here uh, using Optimus, how we can manually choose which VM NIC gets applied to which DV uplink. So if you wanna make sure that VM NIC two or eight or nine is on your third uplink, this is how you do it. So first we'll come over to Optimus, go back over to the networking and add him to the distributed switch. Here's the key, select the host, don't select the NICs. Next, and it's gonna tell you, it's gonna warn you that, hey, you haven't selected any physical NICs, but we know that because we don't get the option in this wizard to pick and choose where they're placed. Do not migrate a VM kernel. Do not migrate any uh, virtual machines. And all it's gonna do is create placeholders for this host in the VDS. So we'll hit finish. It'll add it to the, ho or to the switch. We'll double click him and it'll load the GUI and it's going to say look you don't have any physical adapters uh, in the switch as an uplink so to do this we'll go to manage physical adapters and here's where we pick and choose now if you choose this as a top not under an uplink it's just going to take the first one that you do say zero and assign it to the first one when you get done it's basically going to place them in order so I'll remove that but if we want to say on, I want uplink three to be zero Yes, remove it from the switch. And I want uplink 1 to be 3 because that's a physical NIC that connects into prod and 0 is a physical NIC that connects to my DMZ and on those port groups I've got you know active standby and use set right. That's how you manually place them. You hit OK. It'll add them here and they'll go green. Green and wait for it. Well, while we wait for that to go green uh, the rest of this is pretty simple. You're just going to go through and migrate your VM kernel interface using this, and then use the VM wizard to migrate your VMs, and then go back into here and add your other physical NICs to these uplinks. Uh, that finally went green. And then you're just going to walk everything else over, much like we did with Bumblebee, our test host. But unfortunately, there's no quick, easy wizard to use if you want to do manual assignment of the DV uplinks. That's just the way it is. You're going to have to do each host manually. But, you know, it's not a big deal. You only have to do it one time, and then you're good to go. But that's it. That's your three different options. Your test host that you walk over, the do-it-all-in-one-shot wizard host there with Megatron, and then on Optimus, I showed you how to manually place your DV uplinks and then walk everything else over. So that's it for this lab. Let's jump back to the slide deck. So that's it for the lesson. Uh, short on slides, long on labs. That's how I like lessons to go. Wish more of them I would figure out how to get that done. But, you know, this was a very important, I think, uh, I think lesson in that uh, I like to talk about theory and I like to talk about features and options, but I also want to show you how you can use them in your environment. And that's what this was for. This is something that concerns a lot of vSphere administrators. Virtual networking can be complex. It can be hard to grasp. There's you know things that just aren't really tangible there. And then when you talk about migrating hosts in a live environment, people get really antsy. That's usually when they call someone like me in to help. But I showed you the same way that I do it. You know, I gave you considerations up front, talked about port channels, talked about what you need to do there, talked about you know traffic separation options, and then showed you the methodology that I use. So normally the way I do it is just like I said, I'll do a test host. I walk a couple NICs over, create some VM kernels, move some test VMs, ping everything and make sure all my port groups and functions are fine. Then I walk everything else in that host over and then I can just go through and use the wizard on the rest. 
But if you need to do manual DV uplink assignment for specific VM NICs, you're going to have to go host by host and do that manually. And that's, you know, it's not great, but it's not terrible. One thing that I will often do as a little bit of a tip is that for, say, UCS installs, and this doesn't have to be UCS, but UCS, again, we will carve up multiple virtual NICs off of those hardware I.O. adapters on the blades. To VMware, it looks like that blade has 10 physical NICs. You know, you can do this with HP's Flex 10 and Virtual Connect and some others. But what I normally do is I will create those virtual NICs in the right order. I know what they are. I know they're VM NIC 0 through usually like VM NIC 8 or 9. And then I go into my DV uplink assignments, name them correctly, add them to the uh, port groups, you know, using add active standby unused correctly. And then I can use the wizard because I know that VM NIC 0 is going to go to the first uplink, VM NIC 1 is going to go to the second. Takes a bit more planning, might be some trial and error first time you do it, but that's also an option for easing this because I really don't want to go through and manually assign, you know, 8 or 10 uh, VM NICs to specific DV uplinks on a whole bunch of blades. So that's just one tip. But for your environment, you may just want to be a little bit more cautious and walk every host over and test each one. You know, if I was a guy carrying on call pager that week, I probably wouldn't argue with that. So just take a look at your comfort level, take a look at your risk, and, you know, do it in a soft maintenance window if you want. Probably the best recommendation unless you've done a few. And then, you know, start with your test host and just go. But that's it for this lesson. That'll walk you through how to migrate in a, an existing environment without any downtime. And that wraps it up, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.